Hey folks, how's it going? Red Master here and welcome back to another episode of Cars and Castles, a TV commentary. Where as always, we've got some great matches for you from the wonderful world of Cards TV. Uh, so without any further ado, because I want to keep you here any longer, we've got games to get to. So let's go ahead and jump to match number one. And with that, of course, match one will be Grassblade taking on Feeble, a Warlock Crusader going up against a Viking Crusader. Now, of course, Viking Crusaders are a bit of those interesting faction colors that have a, a lot going on in them. Sometimes very successfully can use a lot of the elements to just overpower opponents. So we'll see if Grassblade can deliver any of that to us today as he goes up against what looks like a standard last will build. We've got Tarius Files, we've got Andrew. Uh, things of that nature and i won't be surprised if we start to see things like banshee maybe pop into his hand or salahar rider but rider itself is more generic here opening up with some interesting exchanges here of course questing knight for dwarven miner into the tarius files to block off the i mean it, it he blocks off the space I, the standard sort of in front of castle attacking castle next turn type of thing uh that's what it looks like we're going for here with that kind of taurus files but not really a whole lot uh i think that night might be used for until we see flamestorm from feeble uh meanwhile feeble are going to respond with the white knight here grassley looking to assemble some forces although very dangerous to do especially us knowing that dragon's fire is sitting in the hand here it could be dangerous if Grassblade piles on more value for that dragon's fire here dino router coming out uh we could pop one now get the rider out which i assume yep looks like we are going to do here so of course three units get wiped off the board here as well uh, as uh the dino rider getting uh, weakened by quite a significant margin but uh, the rider is also not following up here which is pretty interesting uh we do now go to a paladin and knight of flowers which again yields another dragon's fire which is interesting here uh rider of course gonna go ahead take some damage in uh dealing damage to castle of course and with the targets and you're getting a little bit bigger here so now the last will engine starting to go, uh, fuel up a little bit here and things with uh with fat bard and rider in the hand as well things get a pretty dangerous for our friend here rally at the town so okay some potentially a dwarven reanimate strategy from grass blade which uh i will pause to mention it'd be interesting if um we saw more of that play out in this game so far uh it's unfortunately been hit pretty hard by dual dragons fire so uh, we got to throw some understanding here that i mean right now aggressive deck maybe not working the way it wants to uh but hopefully he can recover here we still have some game left as a church fat bard going down now on feeble side we do see the warrior in response plus the mithril pretty much confirming that this is more of a dwarven based deck here with cards like mithril in the equation which is cool to see you don't really see a lot of dwarven decks uh but unfortunately this is why uh, they fall pretty easily in the early stages here they need time to build up their big units here and uh, that's time that a lot of modern decks in the format don't really uh, allow people to do too often. They use a very explosive turn here. So we're seeing another rally played up here. Dragon Crash Shield. Looks like we're advancing our initial peasant line forward here to try and put in some damage, put in some work. Because uh, the White Knight now on Feeble side going to go ahead and keep taking three away. Maybe... Uh, I would assume he's going to go for face here, but I could be wrong because, I mean, he might want to chop down a peasant to stop reanimate here. And it looks like that is what's going to happen, uh, taking away any sort of value from a uh, big reanimate potentially here. Do you see a lightning blade on the peasant that survived the Andrew and Cracks up above there, following up with a grudge bear, Dwarven Archives. Archives, a nice little card here. If you do have some Dwarven synergies here, it just makes sense to have a draw two for two gold spell. Uh, but, I mean, like, at this point... The last wheel engine really taking off here. Cracks has hit the board, has drawn Feeble at least four cards by now. Uh, Talibos uh, into the Nun. It's a great way to get some last wheel pops off while also getting some uh, another annoying lifesteal unit here. I don't really see, see Talibos played too often in uh, last wheel builds actually. But I mean it makes sense, especially when you can pop things like Nun. Not only give your units that global plus one plus one on command... But also got a nice little lifesteal body. So that is pretty cool. Uh, I'm surprised you don't see that maybe more often. But I don't remember what rarity Talibos is. Regardless, Dwarven Weapons now. Uh, plus the Dino Rider and Grudge Bear. 
uh, Dino Rider will connect to the White Knight here, so we do get a little bit of time to breathe, but unfortunately, we're going to see Feeble just keep putting on the pressure here. Blue Firebolt over to the Dino Rider here. Uh, the Grudge Brother taken out by the Andrew. The Peasant taken out by the Talibos here. Craxus a big swing to Castle, and I feel like it's going to be over here. Grassblade really needs something like an Arbiters at this point to come back to at least stay alive here. Uh, none, not really going to do it here. He will trade into the Andrew, reanimate, thrown out into the Banshee. Again, not doing a whole lot, and there is the Surrender, unfortunately, from Grassblade. And, uh, I mean, listen, that was certainly a tough matchup here. Uh, Dwarven decks, like I mentioned in the match, they need the time to set up to create that opportunity to create those big units here with things like the Mithril and the weapons. Unfortunately, when facing a deck like Last Will, they do carry Global Burns from the Flamestorm to pop their own Taurus Files, as well as Dragon's Fire, because it's just a good Warlock card. So, definitely had a, de a bit of a tougher matchup here, but understandably so so we got to congrat uh, congratulate feeble for the victory here in this matchup but uh we don't have to be down for too long we do have some more games to get to so let's go ahead jump right into game number two okay folks in game number two will be thorn taking on good friend tucker one two three i say good friend but i probably like never talked to the guy uh really you know, say that because we had a lot of good games over on the rank ladder. But anyway, uh, we have got a uh, hopefully good game to see as Tucker takes on Thorn, like I mentioned here, Ninja Druid taking on another Crusader Warlock. Now, Tucker always likes to bring something interesting and fresh when he can, so hoping that might be the case here uh, as a Ninja Druid. Again, colors we don't often see. Uh, jumping into it, though, looks like we're going to see a Rider start things out here and into a Lumberjack, so standard exchange here, at least for turn one. Take two damage, going to draw a card, all good. Thorn probably going to respond with, okay, Priest, opting to go for the heal immediately, put that pressure on rather than committing to a Lumberjack. Uh, Tucker, another Lumberjack here, so interesting how he kind of put it in. I guess he needs the draw at this point, which is fine. Uh, going to leave Thorn to probably take some extra damage on Castle. Yep, there it is, so 3 uh, to bring it down to 15. Following up the Lumberjack as well, has no other plays he can make except for Flame Shield, but I feel like Flame Shield here might be a little too aggressive. Especially if he wants to conserve some resources here for something like the White Knight Flame Shield combo. That could be pretty interesting. We saw how effective it was in the last game. We'll see if Thorn can repeat that success. As we do hop into White Knight turn 4. Makes sense here. We could have gone Dark Bender, but I guess White Knight is fine as well. Into the Barbarian from Tucker. Okay, Barbarian coming out. Don't see him too often. Uh... Here, see what he'll be doing here, but White Knight, up like we mentioned, getting the flame shield here, going to 4 8, attacking castle. We'll see how Tucker's able to respond to this if at all. Looks like he can. I can gonna bring it to exactly eight, uh, attack enough to clear White Knight from the board. Fantastic, a uh, little two card combo right there. Rider gonna hit into the barbarian. Look, like it is gonna absorb that damage from the rider here, avoiding face, which is good. Because at this point, we're not really sure if Thorn is fully committing to a no interaction burn deck here. Uh, so, uh, trying to preserve all the health you can on Castle is pretty important. Do go for the Bestial Rage Lunging Attack combo, though, with the armory here. So, Dark Brenner getting wiped off the board, gonna run back, Priest get wiped off as well. Really putting an emphasis on just having board control here is Tucker, which is, I mean, great. We'll see how long that can go for. Uh, we do see Paladin now connecting into the Barbarian. Of course, the 4-6 just enough to uh, pierce through the uh, Barbarian without losing the Resolve. Great stuff. Uh, Wolf into Call and a Pass. Okay, that is fine here. I see more Knights, so perhaps this was more of a Knight strategy from Thorn now that we're looking at it. Uh, Thorn, though, looking like he's going to chop down another 4 from the Paladin. Crack just being rushed in as well into a Pass. Fenrir, though, going to come out make some big splashes here. Of course, not only do we trade with the Paladin, but the Rampage does let us clear off the Craxis as well before that gets any more dangerous. And, uh, yeah. Got some interesting cards here. We'll see if Thorn goes for the aggressive Blue Fire. Looks like we are going to see Flame Shield White Knight, just like before. And then, yes, we are going to see Blue Fire to the armor here. So, eliminating the fact that the Rangers can grow at 8-9, which would be enough to kill the White Knight very easily. 
We'll see Barbarian, Northland's Ranger now, and a pass back. Again, makes sense. We don't have enough resources yet to clear this White Knight here, so we're going to play a little more defensive. We do have to kind of get more aggressive, though, if we are Tucker. Dragon's Fire coming out now. Okay, clearing off the Barbarian. Dark Bender being established as well. I mentioned this because uh, we are only at about five turns left in the matchup until Sudden Death. And Tucker in the single digits when it comes to his life total here, so... Ooh, Beast Your Rage again. So, of course, we're going to come down, kill off the White Knight, having enough attack to reach out and connect to the Darkbender Centaur as well to establish some extra pressure to the board, start getting into that damage that he needs to start equalizing this game. Fantastic stuff. Unfortunately for Thorn, another Questing Knight going to come down here uh, in the hand. So, of course, both of them have to be traded into the Northland Train to try and mitigate all the damage coming in the best as he can. Unfortunately, that does leave Centaur to commit to more damage to the face, though, which uh, looks like Tucker may not have anything for it. Uh, yeah, it looks like he doesn't. Uh, at least for the Centaur to get more dangerous and attack and whatnot. Although Luminaris in the hand of Thorn for the draw, that is unfortunately not going to be enough to help clear out the Rangers. And it looks like Tucker does pull back a, uh, a victory in this matchup here. Fantastic stuff uh, from Tucker. The awareness that he has of the board in that game. Being able to use the Bestial Rages quite effectively here. Proving Lunging Attack. Why that is a dangerous tech for any ninja deck. That extra reach plus the first strike can be absolutely devastating to some builds. Uh, overall, just a fantastic showcase of the ninja druids taking out what appeared to be a, uh, a knight deck. But uh, still doing it nonetheless. Fantastic work for uh, Tucker. With that being said though folks. We do have one more game to get into. So with that being said. Let's go ahead and see what lies ahead in game number 3. And so we approach game number 3 folks. It is going to be Striker taking on Vince 7. Uh, Crusader Vikings getting another shot back here in this episode. Going up against Ninja Viking. Uh, so some dueling Viking strategies here. Let's see which one reigns supreme as we're going to jump into it now and see what is going on here. Uh, starting off with Sushi Shack. That's that's a card. Okay. You don't really see Sushi Shack a lot. I'm curious to see where exactly the plan to go with this is. We do see Kaiju in the hand for Vince as well. So Kaiju speed maybe. It'd be pretty funny. Striker, meanwhile, going to coin into Flying Books to start to establish some draw here. All good. Going to see a Frost Drake in response. Ice Drake, Frost Drake, same thing. Same icy, icy boy. Uh, into the very early Freezing Pillar now from Striker. Uh, not sure I agree with that, but unfortunately, given the hand that Vince has, not able to really capitalize and punish. So we are going to see Sume hit the board here. In a bit of a risky position. Of course, another Freezing Pillar could mean very, very... Uh, big danger for Vince. Book's going to go ahead and trade in with the Ice Drake here. Book's going to get a little boost from the Priest. Uh, we do see the Pacifism come out from Striker, which is a nice little pseudo-removal tool. Unfortunately, when going up against Vikings, they do have things like this Battle Ready coming out now, creating a, a, a 211 Super Sume. That's what I want to call this thing because, my God, it is absolutely huge in the health department right now. Uh, Striker, I'm going to freeze with the... Uh, cloak of ice here which is neat but missed that attack crucially enough um i don't know if he just forgot that range can't retaliate here but kind of missed that three damage on sume we could have brought it down to i believe oh math uh eight yeah eight i can i can certainly do math uh so yeah we'll see how uh, vince is able to capitalize on this um is enough throughout the core here it looks like so that of course clears out the books very easily Put it in that center square, that safe spot that most decks can't reach without some kind of burn or extra speed, which our friend Striker here is not packing. Uh, he'll go for the Paladin, though. That is all well and dandy. We'll see how Koru's able to respond here. Koru going to take some damage to the face. The Battle Ready pushback, a knockback, coming in a little bit of a handy uh, here. Lightning Blade on the Koru now, connecting to both the uh, Paladin and the Pillar. Of course, Kuro going back to that safe square, protecting it from whatever Striker may have in hand here. Uh, and Striker obviously just kind of going for some blockage here. Doesn't really want to deal with it all too much here. We'll see if uh, Vin's not able to capitalize on this. Goes for the Sume connection here. And uh, a bit of a missed opportunity here. Because of course, we do know 
Koru got this speed buff off of Sushi Shack, so it could have, I believe, run in, bought for seven, and then we could, of course, done our Sume stuff. So to see that kind of missed seven certainly hurts, especially with, um, you know, this being a Crusader deck that could have been kind of big, I guess. Well, maybe not too big. Maybe he thought that because Crusaders heal, whatnot. Uh, but yes, we do unfortunately miss that opportunity to connect for 7 damage here. Sume being put out in the open. Koru going to connect to the pillar, finally clear it off the board for now. Into the Luminaris from Striker here. Desperation Luminaris as my, as well. Kind of feels a little bad to be using that, but I guess we have to clear out the Koru somehow so it's not continually bounced back to hand. Makes sense. Uh, this is going to yield us into a Stone Drake here, which does clear out the Earth Knight very easily, very effectively. We're also putting Sume in a position to maybe interact with the Temple uh, and kill off the... Uh, or at least bounce back the Stone Drake, excuse me, here. Unfortunately, second Pacifism coming down. Uh, this time we have no way to... Oh, I say that. We had no way to uh, interact with that, but now we have the Ambush uh, drawn for turn. Going to continue to create Super Sume here, as of course, uh, have to connect into the Priest, unfortunately, no other way around it. We are going to Forbidden Scroll as well, which I find interesting, because of course it does mean Sume is a little bit stronger in the attack department, but of course loses that big buff. Regardless, we do see Stone Drake come back out as well, creating that nice little bounce, reset it uh, yourself type of deal here. And uh, Striker on a couple cards here, even with Tarius, I feel like he is certainly struggling against this build here. Not really sure how to handle the Sume pressure for sure. And of course, Eater coming out now as well. Stone Drake grabbing the Storm Strike, I believe just wants to connect for some damage. Yep, looks like it. I feel like he might be trying to calculate lethal, but of course, uh, two off uh, just thanks to the chain and all that stuff. We do get to pull out the Stone Drake again, which of course, going up all the way to the top there. It does have fast, so hopefully should be able to connect, uh, you know, voiding you know, whatever body blocker striker might have in hand. Or Arbiter. Okay, Arbiter comes out here, does some fun things. Uh, what's he going to clear off? Looks like the Magic Eater. Does get a little extra bit of chain on the Stone Drake as well to make, I guess, Knight of Flowers trade with it better, but doesn't really matter. Uh, we are going to see that Stone Drake warp in, connect to uh, the castle, Avalanche comes down, uh, and then probably a Badger as well, right? Yep, get out the Badger as well. And this is where the damage is coming in to haunt him. Uh, I'm not sure if the math would have lined up by now, but uh, that 7 damage that we missed earlier from Koru... Um, could have potentially ended the game by now depending on where we were just thought it'd be interesting to mention that again i'm not really sure if the math works on that because of the arbiter's return that we saw earlier in the game uh but just something to note here that you know we are fairly close to lethal here but now striker gaining back a hand size thanks tarius down here and uh things like the badger and stone Drake coming in as our last resorts uh, feels like we could be in a stronger position but you know it is what it is here we'll see the tarius connecting with the stone drake Interestingly enough, that is going to trigger the Avalanche here. Uh, Quest Knight, I believe, looks like the card it was going to be summoned to try and take out the uh, the Stone Drake here. And of course, the Knight of Flowers could walk into Badger. But that is why, folks, that if you notice the trap not popping off when you uh, attack with something like a Tarth or a different unit already on board, you have to assume... That the remaining trap, especially with the Vikings, could be Avalanche. And uh, unfortunately, we see that here. Crashes in the way, but uh, you'll see in just a moment. Because of that, Knight of Flowers gets frozen off. Unable to connect with the Badger here, leaving the Badger free to get that stealth buff and move around. We're also keeping the Stone Drake alive. Uh, well, I guess maybe not alive here. Crax is going to move up. Yeah, Crax is going to move up. We are going to kill it, but not before dealing some massive chain damage across the board as well here. Connected to pretty much the entirety of Striker's board. Uh, is the Craxus. Yep, so we're going to see another big one chip damage get dealt to everything. And then, of course, there is the uh, pass back. So, of course, Vin's now open, hoping maybe he can draw a lightning blade. Looks like he's not able to, but we are in sudden death. So, let's see if we, if we can get some uh, some sneaky value in here. We go for the Knight of Flowers, which is interesting here. We could have gotten the Craxus killed off before that gave any more um, draw, but I guess maybe the idea was that we don't want to risk Knight of Flowers running up another Luminaris drop. We're trying to even things out here. Unfortunately for uh, Striker, Yarm is the card left in hand. He did connect to the Badger before moving, so Chain, of course, going to impact it yet again, meaning uh, Vince does walk away with the game. Super Sume able to clutch out a win here in a potentially dangerous situation where Striker could have gotten 
uh, card advantage back, board control back, if the game had extended longer, if he had maybe more health on that castle. Uh, but that was not the case here as Vince does walk away with the victory. Congrats to Vin and Super Sume for winning this bout. But that, of course, brings us to our final game of, or that brings us to a close for of the uh, final game for today. English is working at 100% right now, as you can tell. So I think we can go ahead and move to close out this video. Right, and with that being said, of course, that is going to end us off for the day. Guys, if you had any thoughts on the matches today, let me know your thoughts on them by leaving your thoughts uh, down in the comments section below. And while you're down there, if you haven't done so, be sure to like the video if you did enjoy it. Share it with your friends, and of course, subscribe if you're new or haven't done so already to the channel. Subscribing is the best way uh, that you can show your support here. I said that maybe a little too fast, right? Subscribing is the best way to support the channel, right? Do it. We're getting closer to 1K every day. Love to see it. And uh, yeah, I think that's going to be it for me for now. So until next time, guys, stay gaming.